Greetings to all, everyone. It's Uncle Daily and Adolescent Young Adult uh, Working Group from SIOP. And it's my great pleasure to meet you all here. Uh, your co host for today will be Gabriela Vinoleva from Argentina and Rosanna, me, Rosanna Papian from Armenia. And we are the co chairs of IA Working Group. And we are privileged today to welcome Karen Monk, a researcher, cancer advocate uh, at Yacht Cancer Europe. Thank you very much, Carmen, for accepting our invitation. And um, uh, uh, and uh, we are going to talk today about uh, I, uh, during this I, uh, awareness, Cancer Awareness Week, we are going to talk about uh, your initiatives, uh, about your journey, and probably we can start with your book. Congratulations on that, on publishing this book. It's a great story. And would you tell us a bit more about this book and how it's going to contribute to IA awareness? Thank you. Thank you for the question. And yes, I'm very excited about the book. Well, I have the, the cover here. And so it's almost ready to, to be published. It's going to be published on the 25th of May. And Can Can on the Adventure of the Mean Island is the first book of three. And the idea is to provide an holistic, uh, to show the holistic cancer journey. So not only the physical challenges that could be chemotherapy and losing your hair and feeling weak and all that stuff, but also the emotional and social challenges that cancer patient has. So uh, this is the first book of three because I really want to show most of the cancer journey. Like you cannot summarize it in one book or three books, but it's just the start. So the first one is going to be about the diagnosis. The second one, the finish of the treatment and the third one, is about life after the treatments. That is something that is normally overlooked because you, people say like, oh, okay, but you are healed, you finished the treatment, you are okay. But no, there are so much more after the treatment. So Kankan -Kan is a little panda that he has cancer and together with his best friend, that is a slot, <laughs> he is going to face all the challenges to find the golden crop that is the ultimate treasure. So it's like a treasure hunt map. So the characters are very diverse as well. It is a, an elephant, a chimpanzee, and a toucan. And the idea of this book is two things. Uh, I work in EDI, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Research. And this book is very diverse because of all the animals of different parts of the, of the world. And also, uh, we talk about different types of cancers, different treatments, like different journeys, basically. And that is something that you cannot see very often. For me, Can Can will help AS in the future, and not only AS, but also adults. And to teach kids, since they are very young, everything about cancer. So in a way, for me, Can Can is a project for the future because it's quite difficult to change the mentality of adults because they already made their mind. But for kids, you can show them and in the future they can become very savvy adults that they know how to handle cancer very well. And yeah, in the future, as uh, yes, and adults and even kids, they will feel more comfortable sharing their journey and sharing um, because of their mental health, thanks to that everyone will see cancer in a different way. So that is my way to see cancer. <laughs> That's great, thank you. So your book, I mean, it has like cartoon characters, but it seems that it's aimed to all ages, not just for yes. children. It's well, uh, it's basically, Yes, it's basically from seven to 11 years old, but mm -hmm. many adults have read it and they said that it's for, every age because you learn something from it <laughs> yeah that's great and um and just this is a great material and congratulations for your book but now you as a young adult cancer survivor can you tell us a little bit about the unique challenges that you faced during your own journey i mean i guess part of that is what is reflected in your book but could that at least a little bit of your experience be shared here for others cancer survivors or patients people going through treatment right now? Yes, of course. Thank you for that question because it's very important, right? Like every person has different challenges. 
in my case, I think one of the main ones were anxiety, uh, and I still have it. <laughs> but I try not uh, to think a lot about it, and I try to see the good part of it because normally people see anxiety like an awful thing, but also can make you be aware of things and appreciate the moment. So. I'm starting to think about it, not only as a bad thing, but also as a good thing. Also, I struggle a lot with lo loneliness, especially when you are a young adult that has cancer, because normally cancer is for all people. That's what people said, right? <laughs> so when I was on the treatment, I didn't have a lot of cancer peers. Uh, so I couldn't communicate with them. And that made me feel very lonely. But after that, uh, after the treatment, was my difficult was my most difficult part because it was mental health. So during the treatment, I was more like on a survivor mode. That that is what it's called. So I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this. I'm going after this. So my family, everyone was on the same chip, right? But after the treatment, I started having a lot of anxiety and depression and things that nobody told me that they were going to happen. So was that moment that really talking with other cancer survivors and other cancer patients helped me. Right. And I guess uh -huh. also having your life so structured by treatment, right? A lot of people telling you what your day was going to be like. And then suddenly you had the chance to decide. It might be a huge change. Yes. Right? And you're right, Gabriela, because in a way, also the people that is around you, they weren't back to normal, but I didn't feel normal. <laughs> right. So that was quite difficult as well. And I had other physical effects, late effects, uh, like chemo brain and chronic fatigue that nobody told me about it. And I just started studying and working after the treatment. And it really, I really saw a difference on that. Like my, my mind wasn't the same than before. So that also, yeah, that was also a surprise for me that nobody told me and I wish somebody told me before. Yeah, right. very important point, Carmen, because uh, it's not only about just the duration when uh, when the IA patients receive treatment, but also the follow up uh, during the follow up and survival uh, during that time. Uh, most people have anxiety and problems like it. It can be like in social life and career and education and uncertainty about that. So uh, you have managed to overcome that and. Um, would, uh, and my question also is about the, your YouTube channel. I, I do remember about that. Uh, you, you were very active about that and interviewing the uh, other cancer survivors. So when you decided to have this channel and uh, uh, what, what you would you tell about that also? Well, yeah, this was a project, was a or is it still a volunteer project? I, I don't make anything about it, just that this is one of my passions, right? And I really want to start a channel that I wish I had it when I was in my lowest point, like when I had anxiety and depression and look for material of people similar to me. So this YouTube channel, the aim is to connect people, not only cancer survivors from around the world, but also the co-survivors or families of people that really need this support. And I also want to talk about other topics that nobody talked to me before. <laughs> Uh, like chemo brain or sexuality that is so important in, in right. young adults and adolescents, right? Like nobody told me like that after the treatments and thanks to many of the of the surgeries that I had is going to impact somehow uh, my relationship with my partner. So I really want to talk about intimacy, sexuality, chronic fatigue, chemo brain, grief, uh, so many things. So that was my space just to, uh, because at the beginning I thought that I was going to teach others, but at the end I realized that I was learning more <laughs> than I wanted to teach. So it was, it, it is a very good channel because it has all this interview with experts on the field, but also with cancer survivors from everywhere. At the beginning, the idea was only Latin America. So the first interviews are in Spanish. 
because I thought mm -hmm. that cancer was a really taboo topic in Latin America, but then I realized that it's a global issue. <laughs> so mm -hmm. right now I'm interviewing cancer survivors from everywhere, and this makes me really happy. I, I love to learn and meet people and see more what is different and what is the same, right, regarding cancer. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities in different contexts that are so hard to to pinpoint uh, at some time. Yes. And how long you've been having this YouTube channel, if I may ask? Already for four years. And Ooh. I have more than 75,000 views. And most of the, my public is from 25 to 44 years old. And I have interviewed people from, I don't know, I think like I have more than 80 interviews. And yes, and the public, for my surprise, <laughs> A is from everywhere. I have people watching it from Middle East, from Asia, from countries that they don't even talk Spanish. <laughs> so I thought like, oh, probably it's an expat that is living there or somebody that speaks Spanish that wants to know about cancer and they feel lonely because they are not like in their country or somebody that understand them. So that made me feel also very, very happy. And at the beginning it was quite difficult to find the interviews because not, not everybody wants to talk about their experience could be traumatizing sure. but right now I'm very happy because even there's people that they write to me a message like hey I want to be interviewed hey so I have a big waiting list <laughs> not everyone <laughs> wants to be there <laughs> I hope so I hope so yeah so my guess is that based on your experience and all the experience that you've learned and heard from others through your YouTube channel and you know your life uh after treatment, you gather a lot of information and make a big impact in terms of policy recommendations, right? You just uh, presented that at the European Parliament. So can you tell us a little bit about how that journey, how that is started for you and what is the hope uh, from that um, recommendations? Yes, uh, and I'm very happy that you asked this because uh, we are very proud of this document. Eh? <laughs> <It is. laughs> is the recommendation for equitable, diverse, and inclusive cancer care in Europe. So this is part of what, this is one of the deliverables of the UKAJAS project that is a, a collaboration between all these countries, <laughs> if you can see them. And um, I work for Youth Cancer Europe, so we were in charge of writing these recommendations and is the result of an exhausted literature review. <laughs> and two surveys, one for patients and one for her healthcare providers. And another one, a focus group that we did in Cluj, that we also include the, in Cluj, Romania, that we also include the perceptions of Roma people and other minorities that they are normally overlooked. So this document has three main recommendations and has 20, 26 actions, depending on the topic. So if you can see like this table, maybe you cannot see it, but I will send the link so everybody can see it. <laughs> so we give a uh, actions plans depending on uh, different categories. So it could be gender identity, sexuality, or race, ethnicity, refugees, status or migration, depending on the age, education. So it's a very complete document that we expect that not only uh, organizations, but also governments will use it as a base or, or will use it as a guide to implement EDI recommendations or plan in their country or organizations. So very happy about this and uh, very thankful for Youth Country Europe to give me the opportunity to give not only my perception as a researcher, but also as a migrant and as a cancer patient. Right, yeah, that is super important. We want that link. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that this this is really important for the policy recommendations are really very important. Uh, and uh, my next question would be, uh, what are your next steps in this uh, project? Uh, what are you are also currently working on? What are your future steps about this? In the EDI scenario? We're, we are working on a sustainability project. So how can we ensure that this is going to apply not only in Europe, but also as a migrant in my mind, I want this to be applied everywhere. 
I think that Europe is is like the good example that the world see regarding cancer care. So I really hope that this document and this initiative is going to be applied everywhere. And regarding the project, uh, we are preparing a toolkit that is going to be like a course for, it's going to be a course of three days for different uh, uh, publics. So we want to teach not only cancer patients and cancer uh, organizations, but also researchers and healthcare providers. And this course or toolkit is going to be very interactive. And in a way that everyone in Europe will know how to react to different scenarios and different discrimination depending on the countries. And we are going to talk also about inclusive language and uh, how to deal with different cultures. Uh, so it's going to be very complete. <laughs> Stay tuned, I'm going <laughs> to leave also the link because this is a project that we are going to launch our first course in June, but we hope that we can keep providing this information everywhere in the future. So stay tuned. And who could be part of that? Who could <gasps> join those courses? Yes, I hope that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I will leave the link and, and everything, yes. But could anyone from anywhere join? Well, I think right now, like the first course is for Europe, but I hope that in the future is going to be for everyone. Yeah, I was there, so you never know. I'm uh, <laughs> I was born in Costa Rica, so that's great. And probably to conclude this, we would like to ask uh, you to share some insights, some uh, advice for people who are currently receiving the treatment, uh, unless a young adult especially, and survivors during this uh, AYA uh, Awareness Week. What would you advise them? Well, like, I think one of the things, not, well, it's an advice that can be applied to anything and to anyone, but I, re I really think it is very important not to compare yourself, especially regarding the treatments and the type of cancer, because every experience is different. Everybody is different. Like when I start the treatment, I thought, okay, I'm going to be like the cancer patient that you see in the movies. And when I didn't feel that bad or or like the movie said, or like the book said, I felt like like a, an imposter, like I don't deserve to be called cancer patient or survivor. So yeah, it's just that every person is, is different. Every treatment is different. Every journey is different. So don't compare yourself. And another thing is that when I got cancer, I thought that my life was over, right? Like is that I, wouldn't be able to do everything that I wanted to do and well I didn't do what I thought I was going to be but in a way the journey that I had was more meaningful because it was more difficult definitely but it was worth it yeah so because you had cancer is not going to be the end of your life or you're not going to find happiness it's difficult at the moment because so right. Many things happening, right? Like, and not only for you, also for your family and the people that loves you. But yeah, just time will say it. And yeah, I don't know if that is an advice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you brought a really important point. Like, cancer, your cancer diagnosis doesn't define who you are or you could be. It will shape you, but it will not define the totality. That is up to you, right? It's you what said with better do. words, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we can put in a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and cancer doesn't define you. Like, uh, uh, exactly. I'm a cancer survivor, but I'm so much more. Exactly. That is true. <laughs> so to conclude this, thank you very much again for joining us. And we are looking forward for further details for the news from you and looking forward to your youtube channel your next volume of your books and uh, all the initiatives that you are going to be part of thank you very much thank you thank you very much to you and for the interview and yeah i had a very good time